Wire disc is sore to keep. That carpet stinks. Here's the thing, discus are not hard to keep, they just have certain requirements. In this video, I'm gonna go over those requirements and help you have healthy, happy discus. All right, if you wanna have success with discus, number one is you have to get great stock. You have to find a breeder that's reputable and will stand behind their discus. If you don't find great stock, you will pay the price. Find a good breeder, talk to them, look for references, ask friends, I don't care, just find good fish. There's a lot of bad fish out there. You start with that fish, you're gonna have issues. These are cichlids. They're healthy, strong fish. Wild fish are pretty much bulletproof. Some of my hardiest fish have come from the wild. So that tells you right there that these are strong cichlids. Next, clean water. If you're keeping discus, I hear all the time people saying, I can't keep discus because all the water changes. That is total garbage. You do not have to do massive water changes for keeping fish. When I just kept discus, I did maybe 20% every two weeks, maybe. Sometimes I, I did it every month. But the key to that is great filtration. So on my bare bottom breeding tanks, yes, I have sponge filters and I do a ton of water changes to keep them healthy and grow right. My breeders, I don't do much water changes, but the water's different chemistries as far as acidic and soft. So there are different ways to keep discus. If you're just keeping discus in a tank, it's all about the filtration if you don't want to do the water change. When I had it, I had two uh, canister filters, which I'm not a huge fan of, but they did the job. And then I had a hang on back, and then I even used sponge filters, and it was planted, and it had substrate, and I had nine discus in a 90, and I had Cory cats, I had bristle nose, I had all these fish in there, and it was just a beautiful tank, and I never had any issues. So clean water is the key, okay? Whether you're changing it out or heavy filtration. You want to keep discus, you have to have a heater, you have to keep that tank at 85 degrees, and that's just the way it is. Don't try to keep your discus at 82 degrees, because you're going to have issues. 83 degrees, you're going to have issues. 84 degrees, you're going to be in that safe zone. 85 degrees, that's the cutoff, okay? 85 degrees. Keep your discus at 85 degrees, and you will have success. All right, so now let's take a quick moment for our sponsor for this video. Just kidding. There's no sponsor. No one's going to sponsor this dumb channel. So let's move on. All right, quality foods. This one is a no-brainer. Do not feed your discus cheap food, okay? I love Sarah. Everyone knows I love Sarah. I've grown fish on Sarah. I've kept fish on Sarah. It's something that I prefer. But if you have something you like, just make sure it's good, high-quality protein food, and you'll be good. You can feed uh, mice of shrimp. You can feed regular shrimp. You can feed, if you want bloodworms, feed bloodworms. I, I recommend the Hikari. Just keep them to a minimum so you don't bloat out your fish. Uh, lots of freeze dried. The tube effects freeze dried by Hikari are really good. Uh, those are good. Think of those as a treat, okay? Um, flake food. Flake food's great, okay? People say, oh, your discus can't eat off the top. Garbage, they can eat off the top. It's fine. I do it all the time. I throw flake food in there. I throw the freeze dried pellets in there. I throw all that and they float and the discus pick at it and they and it's fine so don't worry about that make sure your tank is covered with a solid lid i i can't tell you how many times i've done a water change and i've seen a discus fish three feet out of the water because they're, they're jumpers they jump and they jump high and hopefully they jump and make it back into the tank because if they don't if they jump that high and they have a six foot drop to the floor you're going to have issues because that fish is probably not going to make it so always be conscious of your lids Nice, tight, secure lids for discus. Nice, tight, secure lids for discus. Discus do not need to be kept in soft water. Now, for breeding, yes, they need to be soft water. Basically, the egg calcifies and the male can't fertilize. So if you're going to breed discus, then we get into the soft water. Now, pHs. Don't go crazy with pHs. My fish are kept in hard water, tap water. About 350 parts per million and 8.4 pH. I, I know that is like sacrilegious on the internet as far as discus being in hard water and high pH. Here's the thing. It's about consistency, but not just consistency, about great consistency, okay? Keep it clean. 
Don't worry about pH. I don't check my pHs. I know my soft water, what that's like when I'm breeding. And here's the thing, when the, when the parents get done with the babies at about 14 days after hatch, guess what? Within three days, those little fry are moved to hard water. And I just find they grow better in the hard water, okay? So don't get all caught up in this water, checking parameters. You, you will drive yourself nuts. And the amount of money and time you're gonna waste on buying pH meters and don't do it, right? No ammonia, no nitrites, okay? That is the key. Clean water, pH, doesn't matter. Consistency does. So all new fish have to come in and quarantine. That's just the way it should be. And that's not just for discus. That should be for any fish. If you are a responsible fish keeper, you should have the time and energy to set up a quarantine tank and quarantine your fish. In my fish room personally, I run about 45 tanks. If I miss something and it gets squeaked into my room and then I have to deal with a bunch of problems, it's a headache. And if you need more information on how to medicate discus, watch this video. Bam!